Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Monica Valentine and I work at the Library of Congress. All day here at the Library of Congress National Book Festival, we are recognizing and celebrating the importance of reading and authors and books. The Library of Congress makes it seem easy to do this every year, but the truth is the National Book Festival is a huge undertaking. It's a huge financial undertaking, and it is free for everyone because of the generous support from our sponsors and supporters. Spread the joy of reading with your gift online at loc.gov donate from the festival app or when you purchase books today. Now on to the main event. Erin Entrada Kelly is the author of four critically acclaimed books for and about young people, including Blackbird Fly, The Land of Forgotten Girls, and her latest hit, You Go First. Please don't forget to visit the book sales area where her books are available today. This year, Erin was awarded the prestigious John Newberry Medal for her book, Hello Universe, the story of four middle schoolers whose lives intersect in an interesting way. I'm thrilled to introduce and congratulate the 2018 Newberry Medal winner. Please welcome Erin Entrada Kelly. Thank you. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, and then I'm going to take questions at the end. So I hope you have questions. You look super inquisitive. Uh, so I'm assuming you do, no pressure. Um, so one of the most common questions that I get is, why do you write books? Um, and what is your inspiration? So I've answered this in a variety of different ways. That's pretty similar. but. To kind of give you an idea of the answer to both of those questions, I'm going to ask you to use your imaginations. Um, does anyone here like to daydream or use their imaginations a lot? Me too. Okay, so we're going to turn it on, right? And I want you to imagine, okay, I'm going to paint you a picture because I write books, so I tell stories, right? I want you to picture a girl. She's 12 years old. Okay, got it? 12-year-old girl. And she looks a lot different from her peers at school, okay? Whatever you want that to look like. And let's say that she has, well, I'll give you a little hint what she looks like. She has very dark hair, okay? And the other girls in her school, they have perms, like the ones that make your hair curly, because this is the style at her school. This may have been in the 80s. Uh, <laughs> just a spoiler alert. So anyway, the other girls in her school all have like light hair and perms, and she really wants to look like them, and they have blue eyes, and she doesn't have any of those things. So what she has done is this girl that we're picturing in our heads, she has put some spray in her hair to make her hair kind of blonder, okay? Uh, it's called Sun In. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Sun In, but you spray it in your hair, and it makes your hair lighter, okay? Uh, so she's kind of got like these blonde streaks in her hair, okay? And another thing she did is she got a perm, because that's what the other girls were doing, and she wanted to be pretty like the other girls. But the perm didn't, I have to tell you, the perm did not come out that great. So picture her with a very bad perm, kind of like hair like everywhere, okay? It does not help. So now we're going to give her a setting. So that's our character. And she's also, by the way, very quiet, right? She's a daydreamer, like a lot of you. Um, and she's not very outgoing. She has like one best friend. You know how some people have, how many of you in here have like a whole bunch of best friends? And how many of you just have like one or two best friends? Right? Okay. That's the kind of kid that she is. She just has one best friend and her best friend's name is Nicole. So the problem with having one best friend when you're 12 and in middle school is that sometimes your best friend is not in your class. And that is the case in her gym class. So our setting is gonna be gym class. Who loves gym class? A few people, okay, of the adults, how many of you loved gym class? You're like, this is the best. Okay, so as I suspected, uh, <laughs> the majority of people do not enjoy gym class. Okay, some of you do, probably people who know how to like actually play sports and stuff. But our character, our 12-year-old girl, she's terrible at all sports, okay? That's another thing you need to know. When I say she's terrible at all sports, 
I mean, like, when there's a ball coming toward her face, she ducks as if her life depends on it, okay? Also, she can't throw. So if she throws something, it lands like two feet away and it sputters away, okay? So this is our girl, and she's in gym class. Now, something terrible is about to happen, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna do some more scene setting here. You wanna know what the terrible thing is that's about to happen to our 12-year-old girl? The, the coach, Coach Reed is her name, she says, we're gonna play basketball today. Okay, that's the bad thing, number one, because, she, by the way, she's terrible at basketball. Um, running and dribbling, she doesn't understand how that's possible at the same time. Um, so then the coach says, <clears throat> I'm gonna choose two captains, and the captains are gonna choose sides for basketball. Have any of you ever had that happen to you in gym class, the grown-ups and kids where you have to choose sides? You know what I'm talking about. So you're like the captain and you say, I want Sally, I want Joe, you know how it goes. So when the coach announces this, our girl, her heart starts beating really, really hard, okay? Now I have to tell you, um, she, she makes a wish at that moment and it's not a very nice wish because I have to tell you that real people in books just says real people in life, you don't always have nice, sunny thoughts, right? Because no one in here thinks nice thoughts all the time, correct? So this girl has a very, not a very nice thought. And this is her very, not a very nice thought. Her thought is, I hope Jessica is picked last. Now I know who you're, won you're wondering who's Jessica, I'll tell you. Every time in gym class when the, the team captains choose sides, there's always two girls who are picked last or second to last. One of them is our 12-year-old girl, and the other one is a girl named Jessica. Jessica is a perfectly nice girl. She's very, very shy. She doesn't have many friends. So it's either going to be our character or it's going to be Jessica, right? One of them is going to be picked last, right? And our girl character is hoping with every ounce of her soul that it is Jessica and not her, right? So that's not a very nice thought, correct? Because that means Jessica has to be picked last and that she doesn't, she doesn't have to be picked last, but then it's Jessica who has to deal with it. So, he, so the captains start calling out names, and our girl is standing there, you guys. And she's trying to act like she doesn't really care. You know, you've done that before, where you try to act like you don't care about something, but you do. So she's trying to act very casual, because she knows what's coming. And she hears one name after the other, after the other. Now her best friend, Nicole, you remember Nicole, she's not in gym class with her. Because the best thing that can happen when this, this, this scene happens, is that you could be chosen the captain. Then you get to choose the names, right? The second best thing that can happen is that your best friend is the team captain, because you know that your best friend doesn't care that you're terrible at basketball. She's not gonna let you be picked last. So neither of those things have happened. So she's standing there, and her heart's beating, okay? Names are called, names are called. And guess what happens? She's picked last, again, and now she has to go out on the basketball court and play a game that she's already terrible at and pretend like she doesn't care when all she can think about is, I was picked last and everyone knows it, right? Now you're probably wondering how this answers the question. And the question was, if you remember, why do I write books and why do I write for young people? Uh, the answer to the second one is, I'm going to let you in on a secret. I don't really like grown-ups. Uh, <laughs> no offense. Um, kids are much more interesting to me. Um, grown-ups can be a little boring sometimes. Except for me. I'm fascinating. Uh, so, the main reason, though, is when I was a kid, okay, here's another secret. I was very lonely self-conscious, I was second-guessed myself all the time, 
And the thing that grown-ups sometimes forget about being a kid is while you're going through all this, while you're being picked last for basketball, while you're sitting alone at lunch, while you're being left out, while your best friend is talking about you behind your back, while the person who likes you doesn't like you and says something mean and all these terrible things are happening to you, a lot of times you feel like you have to act like you don't care. It doesn't bother you because you want to be, right? You don't want to be the... the you want, to, you want to feel like you're in control of things that are happening to you and that things are just rolling off your back, right? You want to put on a strong exterior. And the problem with that is a lot of times we're putting on a strong exterior, but inside our hearts are breaking. Not all the time, and some more than others. So what I want for my books is for the amount of time that young people are reading, um, that they feel like they're not alone anymore. Because the thing is, when you're the 12-year-old standing in the gym class, or the kid sitting alone at lunch, or the person being made fun of, or the person who's weird or being laughed at, okay? When you're that person, you could be in a room full of people and still feel all alone, and like you're the only person in the universe. So in my books, one common theme that's in all my books is that that's how the kids feel. And it's not a good way to feel but it's inevitable, right? We know what inevitable means. It's gonna happen to all of us at some point. So my hope is that books, by the way, have you figured out the 12 year old me? I didn't reveal that. You, you saw that twist coming, you knew it was coming. Okay, uh, that really wasn't a twist, was it? You knew from the beginning, okay. Um, I want kids to know that they're not alone. And I want you, when you read my books, to connect with the kids that I write about because there's a piece of me in all the kids, except the mean kids. Those I based off of people I don't like. Just kidding, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of my spiel. And one thing that's common in all my books is that it has characters who are called misfits. They're called misfits a lot. Kids who don't quite fit in, who are trying to find their place in the world, which is kind of all kids and all people. And the idea that you can be quiet but mighty, that you can be strong in a lot of different ways, and that you don't have to be the best student, the prettiest, the most handsome, the most athletic, the cleverest. All you have to be is the best version of yourself, right? And that's the message that I want my books to give to you. So all that being said, guess what happens now? You're bursting with questions, I can tell. See, I feel like if I say that ahead of time, everyone will ask questions, right? Because you don't want me to be embarrassed. You just heard that sad story, right? Okay, so I will take questions from people of all ages. Um, unless you're 32, then I don't take them. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, are we ready? Questions, yes. That I ever wrote? or that I ever read. Okay. <laughs> My favorite book that I ever wrote. I have to tell you, I was just having this conversation earlier and a lot of authors, if you've seen other authors, a lot of times they say, I don't have a favorite and I love all my books. They're like my children, you know, and they are, but I do have a favorite. It's my second book and the title is The Land of Forgotten Girls. That's my favorite book that I wrote. And the reason is because it's about two sisters. I have a sister. Does anyone have a sibling? Siblings, yeah. Aren't they fun? Yeah, the people, the kids in the front, they're like, no. Uh, <laughs> it's about two sisters who use their imaginations to overcome their circumstances. But I do love all the books I've wrote, but that one is my favorite. I have an older sister, she's okay. Yes, a uh, question. Oh, oh, there's a mic, okay, good. Um. Are your characters' personalities based on anybody that you've met? Are, yes. A lot of times my characters are based off of, uh, there's a piece of me and a lot of my characters and also the kind of person that I want to be and different qualities from people I've met. Yes. Good question. Thank you. Oh. Why did you make all your characters kind of misfitty in, as opposed to like... Um, like the average people? Oh, that's a great question. I have a soft spot for underdogs. We know what underdogs are, right? Um, underdogs are the, 
kids who are underestimated, who don't know their strengths and other people don't know their, their strengths either. Um, I have a special place in my heart for people who um, go against the grain. And it's very, very hard to be yourself, especially when you're young, because you want to fit in, but then everyone's like, all the grown-ups are like, just be yourself. But then when you be yourself, other people are saying, oh, you're weird, or oh, you're this, oh, you're that. And so then you try to fit in, then you're not being yourself. Anyway, it takes a lot of bravery to be a misfit. So I have a, I have a soft spot for misfits. Great question. Thank you. Um, how long did it take uh, you to write Hello Universe? It took, all my books take about a year to write. So with Hello Universe, I had to do a lot of research. So I spent about six months doing research and then about six months writing. And then it takes another year because you have to send your book to your editor and make revisions and they have to do cover art. So a year and then another year to polish it off and get it ready. How did you figure out you won the Newberry and how did you celebrate? Oh, um, how did I find out I won the Newberry? So I have to tell you that what happens is the co Newberry Committee, for those of you who don't know, they call you usually very early in the morning, the day that they announce the winners. But they did not have my correct phone number. I think they had an old number. So I woke up and I thought, you know, I didn't expect to win anyway, honestly. So I was like, oh, I wonder who won. And I'm driving to work. And I have to act it out. I don't know why. This is me driving. And the phone rings. And it's the Newberry Committee. And they tell me that I won. And I'm on my way to work. And they say, you know, you won. And I said, what? And then there's a big, long pause. It's on YouTube, because there's a big, quiet pause. And then I ask, like, what happened? Uh, and then they repeated it. And I hung up the phone, and I called my job. And I said, I'm not coming in for the rest of the week. <laughs> and then. Because there's no way, right? I mean, first of all, you have to be able to concentrate, and then you have all these interviews. And then guess what happens after that? Like, uh, maybe this kind of answers the question of how I celebrated. Like, the following week, I went back to work, and I was like, by the way, do you remember last week when I said I wasn't coming in for the rest of the week? Well, now I'm not coming back ever. <laughs> because I was able to quit my job. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, why did you choose Scrabble for You Go First? Oh, great question. Why did I choose Scrabble for You Go First? So for those of you who don't know, You Go First is about two kids who compete in online Scrabble and they have a friendship, a long distance friendship. The reason I chose Scrabble, are you ready for this? This is deep, okay? Is because Scrabble is a lot like life. <laughs> and you're saying why, I'm gonna tell you. Um, chess, is another game that's featured a lot in fiction, right? But chess, those of you who play chess, anyone play chess? I play, but not well. Um, it's all strategy, right? If you're playing chess correctly, it's not luck, it's strategy. Um, Scrabble is a mix of luck, because you don't know what cards you're gonna, not cards, tiles, you don't know what letters you're gonna get. It's a mix of luck and strategy. And to me, that's kind of what life is like. Also, a lot of people are familiar with Scrabble, even if they don't play it, so it's a good game to choose. Thank you, great question. Do you remember one of the first stories you wrote as a child? I do, I still have them. Um, one of the first stories I wrote is called The Two Orphans, but it was spelled The Two Orphans because I forgot the H. Um, I also wrote a lot of what we would call today as Sweet Valley High fan fiction. But mine was called Golden Valley Twins, and they were brunettes, so it was original. Um, so those were some of my first stories. Yes. What advice would you get, give to someone who's trying to become published themselves? My advice, my advice is any good writer is a good reader, so you have to read voraciously, and you have to write a lot, and also don't be afraid to, um, write something that isn't that great, because you have to get it out, practice, craft, just like with anything, just like with any craft, you have to work at it. But the number one thing is to read a lot. Yeah. 
Um, in your book, Hello Universe, one of the character's grandmothers, Lola, um, tells him lots of stories to kind of stop him from taking risks and being different. And I was wondering where you learned those stories. So Lola in Hello Universe is a Filipino grandmother who uses a lot of folk tales to tell life lessons. And she's modeled after my mom. My mom loves to tell stories. My mom is a devout Catholic. She actually lives in a convent. And when I was growing up, she told a lot of stories about the saints. And I have to tell you, some of you may know this already, but Lola's stories are very dark. The lives of saints, also very dark. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of suffering um, and a life lesson at the end. So um, Lola's stories are secular, but you know, based in Filipino folklore and Filipino mythology. As a kid, did you really like to write? I loved to write. I started writing when I was eight years old. I loved it. Um, uh, in your books, um, uh, like in Hello Universe, um, uh, did you write the stories or did, um, that Lola told, or were they like stories that you found somewhere? It was and a mix. Lola's folk tales are a mix of actual Filipino folk tales and folk tales that I made up. Yes, great question. Why did you decide for Valentina and Virgil to have the same initials in Hello Universe? Oh, Valencia and Virgil have the same, because what I want you to do when you read Hello Universe is wonder if there's such a thing as fate or coincidence. So they have the same initials. Is it fate? I don't know. It's for you to decide. We have a couple more minutes. Uh, will you ever write a Will you ever write a book up from the from the bully's perspective or will it always be from the character who is gang bullied? That is a great question. No one has ever asked me that before. I don't know. I don't have plans to, but you never know. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Judy Bloom did that, my, who's, she's kind of my idol. She wrote a book called Blubber that's from the, uh, the Bully's Perspective. It's one of my favorite books. Good question, thank you. Do you work on one book or more than one book at a time? I work on one book at a time. That way I can stay focused, mostly. How did you decide to write Hello Universe? How did I decide? You know what? I thought about Virgil, and I wanted to write about a boy who was quiet and shy and sensitive. So we have a lot of girl characters these days who are very sh outspoken and strong-willed, like Valencia. But we also need boy characters who are shy and sensitive and quiet and not good at sports. Um, so the story started with Virgil. Um, what's a tip you have for future writers? A tip I have for future writers, I would say, don't give up. That's good life advice anyway. And read a lot of books. What was your inspiration for Hello Universe? My inspiration is always, uh, I'm always inspired by characters. So when Virgil came into my head and then Valencia, I was inspired to tell their story. Thank you. What's your favorite genre of books to read? My favorite genre, oh my gosh, that's hard. I love scary books, and I love scary movies, and I like, pic you know what, I pretty much like all books. I do like middle grade, I mean, that's what I write. So a couple of my favorite books are The One and Only Ivan, and you've read that. Yeah, Catherine Applegate is here later, I believe. And also uh, When You Reach Me by Rebecca Steed. Those are two of my favorite books. Um. Do you think you're pretty funny, or are your books mostly serious? Do I think I'm funny, or what? <clears throat> Curious? Mostly serious. Hmm? Oh, um, serious. Are, are your books funny or serious? Oh, my mostly? books. OK. Because I'm very serious. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm funny. Um, no. Uh, you know, I would say that they are a little bit of both. I write contemporary, although next year I have a, a fantasy coming out, my first fantasy, but all my books are contemporary real life. So it's about as funny as real life is. <laughs> all right, last question. How many books have you wrote? I have four books out right now that are published. I've written mountains and mountains, and one more coming out next year, and a bazillion after that probably. 
That's just an estimate. Thank you. I'm signing it too. So come see me. All right. And thank you for coming.